hacking back takes the lid off Pandora's box uh, if, if we were to allow companies to hack back. Uh, that is, allow individuals or private organizations to, to fight back against cyber adversaries who are, who are uh, penetrating their networks. Um, you, okay, first it's illegal. Great. That's, that's interesting, but maybe not all that relevant, right? Because, I mean, laws do change. It, it, used to be, um, it used to be illegal to drink a beer in this country no, no matter how old you were, and it was perfectly legal to send kids down into coal mines, right? So laws change. Um, but hacking back is also incredibly stupid, and it's stupid because if you're going to pick a fight or engage in a fight with somebody, you better have escalation dominance. And I don't care if you're a Wall Street bank spending $500 million a year on security, you better ask yourself whether you have escalation dominance over the, over the PLA, the Chinese army, or whether you have escalation dominance over the Russian intelligence service. And if the answer is no, then don't hack back, because you're going to get yourself locked in a fight you're going to lose. There is a disturbing level of agitation, some a little bit in businesses, but, but mainly in Congress. Um, to change the law to allow companies to hack back, I, I think it is, it is beyond disastrous and stupid. Um, and, and we just shouldn't do it. I always think of the cyber domain as, as being characterized by four vectors. And they're all moving in the same direction, but they're moving at very different speeds. You have the tech vector that's moving you know, at the speed of light, right? Really, really fast. And just behind it, just behind it, is the second vector, which is social norms. And, I mean, anybody with young kids knows that the norms are evolving right on the heels of the tech. And then there's a huge gap back to law and policy. And so all the interesting stuff is happening in that gap. It's all the stuff that's technically feasible and has some level of social acceptance, but law and policy haven't caught up yet. That's where the conversation's happening. And so how can we find a way to, we're not going to slow the tech down, and we don't want to. Um, but how can we get policy and law to move faster and close the gap, shrink the gap?